Okay, good day to everybody. Uh, so my name is Juho Vihonen and I'm going to give you a uh, short presentation about my work on uh, flexible links and uh, inertial units. But to introduce myself, uh, when I was writing this paper I used to work with, uh, as it reads on the slide, I used to work with uh, Tampere University of Technology at the Department of Signal Processing where I uh, held the position of a uh, senior research fellow. But uh, this is not the case anymore. I'm working uh, currently with a company called Cargo Tech, where um, my responsibility is basically to boost uh, the company's uh, uh, AI and analytics capabilities. And uh, in a nutshell, Cargo Tech is a uh, company specializing to material handling equipment, and um, the turnover is about uh, three and a half billion euros annually. But to go back to this topic, um, there is really a uh, trend towards more flexible cranes and uh, flexible multi-link robotics in general. And uh, why is this? Well, the primary reason is that flexible systems can withstand higher forces without permanent structural deformations than their stiff counterparts. So uh, uh, they are less bulky in design, they are lighter, they are faster and easier to transport. But as you probably know, tip, uh, the manipulator tip positioning accuracy is basically everything in robotics. But uh, uh, flexible systems are prone to all sorts of oscillations and uh, static deflections, among others. So uh, these issues can severely affect uh, the accuracy uh, in tip positioning problems and then especially in motion control uh, problems uh, since uh, often uh, these systems are stimulated by high speeds and vast payloads. So uh, while the modeling of flexible structures may be viewed uh, as a uh, well-developed field of engineering, it's, I guess, fair to say that uh, the monitoring for the structural deformations is not that trivial. So a couple of examples is given uh, at the bottom. So uh, uh, as it became evident for, for instance, in uh, the previous presentation, computer vision is quite often computationally intensive. And uh, the accuracy you get from a uh, vision system is often also dependent on the viewing geometry. Another very popular solution to uh, monitor for structural deformations is uh, to use strain gauge. And uh, uh, in many cases, they are relatively inaccurate. And uh, this is, uh, uh, in most cases, due to the fact that you, you often, for instance, you glue them on a structure you want to monitor for. And, uh, the gluing also makes them uh, quite error prone in a sense that uh, they are prone to uh, wear and failure in that sense. So the goal of this work uh, is to, or should I say, was to estimate the amount of beam bending for advanced tip control schemes with vibration damping capabilities by proposing a uh, new circular model for inertial sensors. And why inertial sensors? Well, firstly, uh, inertial sensors with multi-axis integration are becoming ubiquitous commodities with their adaptation into many kinds of consumer electronics, automotive applications, as well as, for instance, drones. Uh, the good thing uh, about especially inertial sensors um, manufactured using uh, microelectromechanical systems technologies that, uh, that the, their footprint is very small, so they occupy basically no space. You can even mount them uh, or, let's say, embed them to structures uh, in order to protect them from a hostile environment. Uh, and since uh, uh, 
these uh, so-called MEMS components uh, practically contain no moving parts. They are not subject to wear, as many other components are that require a physical contact with a uh, moving mechanism. So here's our experimental setup. Uh, uh, we basically have had a uh, hydraulically actuated flexible beam attached uh, to a uh, rigid base. And uh, uh, it shows on the picture that the, there is a uh, network of four beam fixed inertial units which provided us uh, the motion feedback. And each of these units comprised a uh, three-axis linear accelerometer and three-axis axis gyro. And uh, uh, we qualified the deformation profile of the beam in a vertical plane. And this is uh, from the viewpoint of uh, load lifting and lowering operations of the most practical interest. Uh, and uh, obviously, this is related to the accumulation of mechanical stress. The background of this work was that uh, we had a uh, nonlinear dynamic controller for the hydraulically actuated link you saw on the previous slide readily available. We also develop, developed a uh, finite element uh, based observer to estimate the fluctual degrees of freedom of the flexible link. And uh, the estimates we obtained from the observer are suitable as such to be used uh, as feedback, sing feedback signals in the controller, but um, the finite element method imposed some uh, computational challenges, as they often do in uh, real-time scenarios. So, uh, for instance, we had only like five elements in the uh, finite, element, finite element model um, in order to be able to run it in real time. But uh, what is also worth mentioning is the offline tuning of uh, the model's parameters. And by this I mean that even though we utilized the, the uh, 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 nominal parameters for the materials, uh, utilized to manufacture the, the steel beam on the previous slide, uh, we really couldn't sort of uh, model uh, the bending by just using these values from the data sheets. So that sort of uh, brought us uh, to the research question of uh, this work. Uh, could it be somehow possible to utilize uh, uh, multiple inertial units to uh, estimate the bending profile of uh, a link system uh, or a link uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, sort of uh, preparing all the equipment or, or sort of uh, indirect measuring methods to validate a finite element model. And uh, for this we had uh, previously uh, experienced, uh, experienced some uh, uh, close-up control techniques using inertial sensors uh, in uh, stiff, uh, rigid body systems. And uh, especially uh, we had some uh, extensive experience of uh, multi-ex manipulators in the domain of uh, hydraulically uh, powered systems. So the following slide, uh, a slide enlightens the difference between the classic uh, rigid body kinematics uh, versus the proposed uh, circular kinematic model. Uh, uh, so if you think about uh, open chain serial linkages uh, connected by joints, the rigid, rigid body assumption basically means that uh, one can solve the global kinematics by mounting reference frames to the interacting bodies. And uh, these reference frames can be, for instance, the, the axis of some sensors. As you can see from the left-hand side image, uh, that uh, uh, the capital letter P, uh, or the frames uh, with, denoted by capital letter P, P are the, uh, they denote, uh, for instance, a sensor mounted on the link. But then you can, can also have a, a sensor frame uh, mounted on a joint uh, connecting to 
rigid links, for instance. Uh, but it's not trivial to apply this kind of a model to a uh, flexible structure. And uh, that's why uh, we came up with this uh, circle bending model, where the bending from one sensor to the other is assumed to be a uh, circle-shaped closed curve. And uh, you can see on the right-hand side picture, though, again, these uh, sensor frames uh, now in plane, uh, denoted by P1, P2, and P3, and so on, uh, attached to the deform uh, beam. But then, if you take a look at the left-hand side picture, there's really no uh, sort of intuitive way to place a joint between the sensors on the right-hand side picture. So that kind of like uh, uh, led us to the uh, case where we wanted to uh, assume uh, the strain between the sensors constant so that it would satisfy this kind of a uh, circular model. But what could be a uh, major reason making the circular bending a convenient assumption to be used with inertial units, especially? Well, uh, the primary reason is that the circular model is critically dependent on the angle between the pair of sensors only. And this is quite intuitive if, if you look at the uh, picture on the right-hand side, uh, since uh, that's basically the, well, illustrating the uh, circle equation. Once you know the uh, the angle, uh, you're pretty much there. You can solve the radius easily, and that allows you to the, uh, to infer the uh, the, dispa uh, the the displacement of the sensors if the bending occurs. And uh, another sort of uh, important motive. Uh, for this was that if you think about your, let's say, mobile handheld devices, um, uh, they are packed with inertial units and they are good in inclination sensing. So again, there's readily good methodology available to solve uh, the inclination angle. So here are a uh, couple of videos showing free vibration and uh, elastic vibration damping control of the uh, link in question. So on the left hand side you can see the light free vibration and the, of the elastic vibration that control on the, on the right hand side and the, the left hand video should show you uh, that the beam is really, really flexible. Um, and uh, previously some su successful method in, in the side of literature has mostly been focused on elasticity at the joints. So this is clearly not the case in this case. Uh, we can't model the elasticity at a joint level. It's structural, really. So the results are uh, for these videos shown here. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see <clears throat> that uh, uh, since uh, mm, gyros are, for instance, often uh, plagued by varying uh, bias dynamics. The sense of fusion we, uh, we uh, propose in the paper, it, it seems to tackle the problem uh, quite well during the motion. And uh, uh, then we also uh, tested the, or validated the elastic vibration damping control using a uh, optical tracking system. And uh, uh, as you can see, again, the, it, uh, the uh, inertial sensor network provides uh, a close match to the optical tracker what comes to the tip deflection. To conclude, uh, we proposed a uh, simple and computationally inexpensive method for link deformation estimation. And uh, uh, this may even obviate the rather difficult observer design, as I discussed previously. You only need to mount the inertial sensors to the uh, bending structure. Uh, it's, the model is easy to apply since it does not require the global kinematics of your, let's say, for instance, a 
multi-axis system. However, there were some difficulties uh, since uh, uh, the obtained uh, flexural degrees of freedom from the sensor network, network could not be directly used as feedback sin signals in the controller and uh, uh, we were basically forced to use some low-pass filtering uh, originating from the high nose density of the uh, inertia units we used, probably also some pressure ripples and so on since the, the system was hydraulic. Thank you. <laughs>